you had a cobra and you made it yellow and you took a photo of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was at Shinrata Desera. I I think I have a, I don't know, I probably have three cobras scattered around the galaxy. Um, but this this one was easy to get to. And and, and I, I really I really do like the cobra. I'd forgotten how fun they are to fly, to be honest. Um, I've been flying a crate phantom round with um, relatively weak thrusters. I think they're five Ds. Oh yeah, is it an like exploration that. ship? Well, it must be, mustn't it? It's kind of kind of explorationy, generally purpose type type thing. It, uh, it it's, it's got a reasonable range now, following the recent community goals. Oh yes, and uh, and having having uh, acquired the, the the improved FSD, I've got four of them so far. I need a couple more uh, before before the price goes up. It's actually amazing how many ships have a size five frame shift drive, and there, 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 there really is just loads and loads and loads, including the sort of I think challengers and chieftains and all that sort of stuff, and the federal assault ships and all those sorts of things. But also the crate phantom and the the crate mark two, and I've got an asp explorer and a diamondback explorer, the imperial clipper as well, the python. They're they're all size five frame shift drives, so um, it, it it's it's by far the most popular size. And you know, because it, because these things are just so so useful to have, just for getting around the galaxy, um, getting to the next place you need to be, then you know, it, it see it seems sort of worth putting in a little bit of effort now to find these ob obscure sort of data mind wake exceptions are easy. You just hang around outside a station and 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 sort of scan out, scan all the wakes. <laughs> That's, that's that's what I spent a lot of time doing, actually, sort of hang, hanging around station entrances and. Uh, and you do uh, actually, I suppose. Videoing, you're taking, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, I mean it, it, it's it's taking taking photographs, but mainly video, um, because it, it's always nice to see the 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 um, rotating kind of hub of the of the station, and seeing what sort of ships go in and out, and particularly when it's large ships like a like a Type Nine or a Type Ten, sort of maneuvering through the slot very slowly. That's 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 yeah. quite impressive. So yeah, I, I I do that quite a bit to use in the Galnet Digest videos. Mainly, yes, yes, which you uh, produce at a rate of knots all the time. I do a few of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you do. You do about four or five a week. <laughs> as as you would know, as you do the voices for I, quite I, a lot of them. I do help out sometimes. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, the, the dedication to do this for so many years is quite impressive. I would yeah, say. yeah. Well, I, of course, because I'm doing it on YouTube now, that that adds an extra layer of complexity because it's got the video. Um, but uh, prior to that, the, the the podcast version, I've got I've got about five years of them, sort of stretching back to thirty three oh two. That's a, a necessarily d degree of dedication. <laughs> now it's fun. It's fun. Oh it's no, it is. I like doing it. It's great fun. I really enjoy it. Yeah. I always like reading what you've written. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, um, sort of having having sort of flown around this crate phantom for a while, um, getting into the cobra, which has. Um, even though it's got sort of fairly thick armor on it, it's got it's got decent engines, decent engineered engines, and um, you 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 kind of you kind of just sort of hit the boost button and and you you're sort of whizzing around. It's it's the, the, everyone says how wonderful the Cobra is, and they probably don't fly it a lot. But I I I had a period where I did a little bit of exploration in it. I tried to make the frameshift drive as good as I could. All right, in it, okay. But I didn't go that far, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, you don't need to go very far to do exploration. This is one of one of the things that people get confused about. I I, I do like sort of the very long range um, that you can get on a, an anaconda, for example, because I like going to the extremities of the galaxy, to the up and down as far as you can, and get to these really hard to get to stars. It's almost like a little chess puzzle. I like that. Yeah. Um, but um, there are plenty of unexplored systems, even within two thousand light years of. Um, of, of soul there are, um, there are. if if you know where to look well that's you, it if, you need to look where people haven't <laughs> I think well yeah exactly less exactly. exciting I, places to find the exciting thing. <laughs> yeah that's right and, and and people tend to go straight towards nebulae or oh, yeah. sort of straight i know i do known, well yeah there you go so. pretty, aren't they? but yeah mm -hmm. you can find wonderful planets to look at and other things you can yes and 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 yeah, again it, it depends very much what you want to get out of your exploration. If you're looking for really, really pretty places, then sometimes it's the ice worlds that are the best, and particularly if they're very close together. So 
generally when I go into a system and kind of scan the system, I'll, I'll look for two moons that are very, very close together that have, have the same distance from the, the jumping point. And uh, if they're really close together, then you land on one of them and land in the right place. You get this massive moon on the horizon, which just can look gorgeous. And, and you know, depending on the terrain, you can get these lovely gullies and things. But that's all going to change, of course. Oh, gosh, yes. Is... <laughs> things are going to look different. I don't think they're necessarily going to flatten everything. Yeah, I mean, rather rather than being a, a mathematical noise mesh, if you like, which, which creates a height map. Um, what's going to happen instead is that it's going to use mathematics to create the general kind of shape of the planet, and then there's a lot, a lot of detail that's getting plonked in using using predefined assets, which will then be kind of uh, turned, sculpted, shaped, um, and, and blended in, into the uh, terrain, which will make it look much more realistic when you get up close. So rather than it just to dissolving into like a, like a like a fractal diagram where you keep going in and it gets more and more detail, this is this is actually going to stop to the point where you see rocks and stuff, you know, stuff that looks recognisable because it's made out of assets. I think it looks like it looks like it's gonna be quite good, and I think with any alpha, you've got to expect bugs and people are probably gonna have a benny when things go wrong. But that's why you play in the alpha, isn't it, to help them work out what's going wrong. Yes, the alpha is not a preview. The alpha is testing. Yeah. The alpha is finding out how it works and, and helping to fix it and indeed making suggestions for improving it. Did you play in the original alpha? I didn't. And, and that was, I th well, it was, it was partly because I didn't know what was going on, to be honest. The way that I sort of, sort of backed Elite Dangerous was I saw there was a Kickstarter. I put my 20 quid into the early backers pledge. And then I went away, and two years later, it was in Gamma. Mm. And somebody said, hey, hey, that, that, that thing that you backed two years ago, did you know that it's, you, you can play it now? <laughs> and so I, had, I kind of had a look at it. And, and, and so all, 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 of the, um, all of the hanging around waiting for it to happen that a lot of other people experienced, that didn't happen to me. No, I, I very just, much I just... just let the emails <laughs> spill into my inbox and looked at them occasionally. <laughs> Even better for me, the um, Outlook had decided that it didn't like Frontier <laughs> developments, and, it, and and so it, so it, it put them all in spam. So I didn't oh no. I didn't see any of them. No, that's 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 absolutely fine because it meant I wasn't thinking about it. I wasn't thinking when's it going to turn up. Tell me a little bit about about sort of how you drew the uh, Cobra because one one of the things I notice is that, and it's something that I hadn't noticed before to be honest, uh, until I put the yellow paint job on it. Um, it has an awful lot of separate panels which have different textures to them. I so there's surprised. some which are yellow, some, some which are bright yellow, and others which have a kind of textured, sort of slightly darker colour to them. They were, weren't they? I thought that was quite an interesting thing. You think of the Cobra as being quite flat. Do you know what? I, know I got that. That's really inaccurate. I got to a point halfway through and I realised I couldn't make lines match up. Oh. The left hand is inaccurate. It's massively inaccurate, that is. But do you know what? No one really cares that much. I, I'm almost tempted to sort of overlay the actual Cobra picture on top of a photograph of my picture just to see how far off I, I got it. But I try not to look at the original once I've done the picture. And then occasionally you'll do a picture for someone and then they'll say, look, this is the picture that she drew. And then you see my, my mangled warped things. Like, you know, when they res <laughs> restore paintings really badly. Like, ah, yes, recently, yes. the old masters get restored by the local plumber. And, <laughs> and then they, they place the original image of what it looked like uh, next uh -huh. to the restore. That's how I feel. <laughs> oh, okay. You, you, you are the restorer. <laughs> I, I, I like... I like having some 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 life in the galaxy, and yeah. it, it's actually amazing how invested people get in it. Um, people get really upset about Lacon being taken over, for example. Um, so 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 people yes. really do sort of yeah. get their heads right inside people the spent game. Hours though doing this game, so mm. it's sort of understandable. Yes, yes, I, I, I suppose it is, um, and. And, and that's what was missing when we didn't have any Galnet. 